Hello everyone, I am Pen Rusi. I'm a developer at ThoughtWorks. I am not in DevOps, I am not a sysadmin, I'm a developer that day to day just develop functionality. Uh, today I'm gonna talk a little, bit about, a, little about, a little bit about my experience with Ansible and how I use this experiment to learn it and uh, kind of like going through, through some basics of Ansible as well. So I hope you enjoy it. So, oh, before I go on, I also am an organizer for Hack for Privacy. Hack for Privacy is a network of technologists who care about digital privacy. The reason I'm mentioning this is because at the moment we're working on this uh, tool called Pixelated, which is, imagine Gmail, but with, uh, like, with encryption by default. And we want to work on the, improve the experience of development and so we need a lot of DevOps skills. So it's a, it's a meetup, but uh, we have a Slack channel where we have discussions regularly. So if you wanna join, just come and see me after or just go to cryptohack.net. Uh, yeah, all right. So, <coughs> so all right, so I'm, in, I'm not a dev. And, but I really, but I've been in projects, like in ThoughtWorks, we are usually in projects where continuous integration and continuous development is the rule. So things like Puppet or, or Docker or Ansible are things that are really familiar to me, but I've never done anything from scratch. I've tweaked a bit of Ansible code before, but that's as far as it gets. Uh, so, the other thing is that DevOps, like uh, ThoughtWorks has this policy that every now and then they make you change your laptop. So I had to change my Mac. Uh, what I'm going to, to talk about, the, so I created a script and the script is tested in, in, my, in my Mac and so it works for El Capitan. Uh, I haven't tested in anything else, but all right, that's, that's what I did. So what I'm going to do today is walk you through my experience and some of the Ansible things that I learned along the way. All right, so new laptop, right? So new laptop, you have an empty laptop uh, and you need to install all your software and you need to tweak and you need to change all the preferences of, that, of, the, of the applications that you download. And if, for example, you have, uh, you want your, your mouse to move faster than it does by default, you change that in your Mac preferences and, 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 that, and you need to change all the things that make your computer yours. So that's pretty boring and it's a pretty tedious thing to do. So I decided to make it a little bit interesting for me. And so I said, all right, my challenge is I'm not gonna install anything if I don't do it with a script. Uh, so if there's no script, there will be no software. So that's how it started. So my plan was to Google the heck out of this and somehow find a way to install Ansible. And then from there, I will install something in the Mac world. Uh, there are two things in the Mac world that I really like. Uh, one of them is called Homebrew. Homebrew is a package manager, which is just basically uh, a thing that it lets you install libraries that you will usually, usually use in, through the command line uh, and just with a command line. Uh, and Something that you, you would say something like brew install MySQL or brew install Node.js. And so that was, I thought, all right, so I install Ansible and then I install Homebrew. And with that, I can install something called Homebrew Cask. So Homebrew, Homebrew Cask is this exact same thing, but for applications, for applications that have a graphic user interface. So instead of just downloading, going to the website and downloading let's say Spotify, and download, downloading the package and click on it and drag it and drop it in a, in a browser if you're in off, or if you're in, in, in the Windows world, you go next, 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 finish. Instead of doing all that, you can do just brew, cask, install Spotify, and that's, that's it, that's what it takes. So that was my plan. And from that, I said, all right, I have Ansible, Homebrew, Homebrew Cask, and from that moment I will be able to install all the things. And so, uh, I'll, instead of like, on top of installing all the things, I will also try to configure as many as I can. All right. So, 
El Capitan, after Googling in a couple of minutes, uh, figured out that El Capitan comes with uh, Python 2.7. So I said, the easiest way and at that point is just to install the Python's package manager, which is pip. And from there, uh, install Ansible. So I get very excited. I open the command line and start typing. And right there, I broke the rule. Like It took me like 10 seconds to break it. Instead of creating a script, I started typing everything in, in the command line. Uh, if, I had a, if I had the software, I would have created a virtual machine to try this all, but I didn't. So the other thing that would have been really, really easy is if I was configuring something in a, re in a remote machine that I could just blow up or uh, destroy it. But this was my own computer, and so formatting again and doing everything uh, and formatting and installing uh, the OS from scratch, it was going to be painful, so I just manually undid everything and created a bash script. So the bash script just was installing the manager, the package manager, and from there installing Ansible. I will regret this later, but uh, from, from at that point, got the thing, it got the first step, which was installing Ansible done, so I was happy with it. Uh, <clears throat> before Moving on, I'll talk a little bit about Ansible. So Ansible is a tool for managing and configuring computers, nodes, servers, machines, you, you name it. Uh, it is support in Unix, uh, and it's somehow supported in Windows. I'm not very familiar with Windows at this point in my life, so uh, I'm just going to drop it there. Uh, but what makes Ansible different from other tools is the fact that you don't need to install anything in the computers that you're managing to able to run uh, tasks or actions on those computers. So if you have, I don't know, any other tool will have to pre-install an agent on those computers to, to be able to control them. With Ansible, you do that through SSH. Uh, SSH is one of the most scrutinized and maintained pieces of software because, well, we kind of rely on SSH for connecting to other servers. So uh, Ansible said, well, SSH is right there, so we're just going to use that. Uh, and it, when, you write, when you type the code, when you write, it's YAML, which is very human readable. So it's re really easy to read. And Ansible has these two, this basic notion of having an inventory, which is all the computers that you want to control, and the tasks or modules, which are the actions that you want to execute on those computers. All right, so there's this thing that you can do, and it's just executing one task at a time. Let's see, where's my mouse? It's gotta be tricky. Can you see there on the back? Cool. So you can do one task at a time and do Ansible, uh, and they say, I'm gonna run this for all the nodes that I have in my inventory. I'm just going to define my inventory in line because it's easy. And I'm going to say, well, my inventory of computers is just this laptop right here. Uh, and you can say, well, I'm just going to run a module that's a uh, task in Ansible world, module. And I'm going to, sorry? Oh, right. Let me see. How about there? Cool. And so when you execute a task, hopefully this will work. Oh, right. So it's trying to connect through uh, SSH to my own computer. So I have to say, you know what? Just run this with a local connection. And I try that again, and it returns uh, JSON. So that's the whole thing. You run commands, and it returns JSON. You can do things like, uh, execute things on the computer. Let's let's say this was a remote computer, and what I can do as well. Oh, it's not gonna work. There, I can execute a command in that remote machine or here and say, oh no, it's in the commands and say, it, I can pass arguments and say, well, hello. Oops, no. And it doesn't work. Oh. Right. 
because I'm using an E. So you can run commands in, 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 in a terminal remotely as well. Uh, that's one way of using Ansible. It's not a really useful one because you can do that from the, from the terminal as well. So let's go back to the presentation. OK, so the other way of running Ansible is uh, having playbooks. Playbooks is just uh, a script. That's, that's the Ansible workflow scripts, like really, really long script with uh, more, complex, uh, more complex tasks. So if you had a terminal, so you have a computer where you, where you can run your commands from. And what you can do is that you can just run it on a single computer, or you can start aggregating them and saying, well, this is my group of servers that are in South Australia or in Victoria. Or there can be another group that says, well, these are my Apache servers. Or these are my database servers. And you can run commands in a group of uh, computers as well. So well, I had this. And, or, or you can run it on locally, which is what I'm doing here. All right, so with this knowledge, I created my first playbook right here. And I say I'm going to run it on all the computers that I'm going to man manage, which is my, my own computer. And I went to Homebrew and to see how I, the hell I will install that thing. And so when you go to the installation instructions, they say just copy and paste this uh, command in the command line. I know that this is really unsafe. I know this is really unsecure and it's horrible, but I trust Humber, so I decide to just go with it. And I use command. I use the, the module command, and I paste exactly what's there in here, and I run my command, and it works. Now I have Humber in my computer. Uh, but when I run it the second time, it fails. I get a really obscure uh, error, but the problem is that uh, homebrew is already installed, so I can't install it again. And so my second error is that I'm overusing the module command. And the module command is really, really dumb. And it's not the way to use Ansible. Uh, so I go and hack my way through this thing again. And I find a way to check if homebrew is installed. And, and I use this Wayne clause to say, well, if it's installed, don't install it again. But I'm, this is really, really hacky. So I go online again, Googling myself, and I start uh, learning about modules. Uh, modules is the way to use Ansible. Uh, with modules, you can install software. You can uh, generate SSH keys. You can create a database. You can do anything, uh, pretty much anything. But the cool thing about modules is this, uh, they know the facts of your computer. So let's say you have a script. And in that script, you install a server. And then you, in, you install the, a database. And then you turn on that servers for the database, and you create a database. Well, let's say that halfway there, uh, you had an error in your script, and your script, is, is, uh, your script fails. But it installed the server, it installed the database software, but then it broke. So you go back to your script, you fix it, and when you run it again, then uh, it skips the, the installation of the, of the server because it's already installed. And it is, and skips the installation of the software of the database because it's already installed. And it picks up from where it left off. And this is what is really cool about Ansible. Because in your script, you're not saying do this, 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 and that. What you're saying is that you're doing this declarative way of saying, this is the state I want my machine to be in. And this was really powerful. Of uh, This is the thing that is really, really powerful of Ansible. Uh, all right, so back to my plan. Now I have Ansible. Uh, I have hacked my way through Homebrew. And I need to, I need to install Homebrew Cask. So uh, lucky me, there's a, there's a module for Homebrew. In Ansible, there are two types of, two types of modules. Uh, the first type is the core modules. Those are the modules that are maintained by the people in, uh, by the team, by the Ansible team. Ansible is open source, by the way, so, and, and well, they have a team and they, they maintain these, uh, the core modules. But then the community as well has built its, uh, its own modules, and Homebrew has a module. So for installing Cask, it's really simple. I just use Homebrew, 
and say, well, the name is task, the name of the package that I'm going to install is task. And when I run this script, I want the, the task package to be present. That's what state thing means. And that's all it takes to install a homebrew task. And once I have homebrew task, because homebrew task as well has a, a module, it is really easy to install anything, as long as it has a formula in homebrew cast. So Spotify does, and then I install Google Chrome, and I installed Slack, and I installed Lightroom, and I installed Skype, and I installed uh, IntelliJ, and Sublime, and blah, 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 and so on. And suddenly it becomes this large, large script. Really easy to do, but it's really, really long, so my dev kicks in. And I need, so what I did instead is that instead of having this long thing, uh, I could have used uh, the, this way and say, well, with items, uh, Ansible is going to repeat the same task for each item that is in, on that list. So this could have been a way that I fixed that. Uh, but what, what I did instead at, some, at this point was that uh, I organized my tasks with Ansible roles. So at this point, I have my dev cycle in place. Uh, I go to Homebrew Cask, see if uh, the, the application that I want to install is there, and I add it to my script. Simple. But what I'm, gonna, what I'm going to do now is just break this long, long, long script into smaller things that I can uh, read better. And so roles are the way that Ansible has to organize tasks. Uh, and also what you can do with a role is that if there's any task that needs a file or that it needs a template, you can use a role to encapsulate all that data uh, and organize it and have it in there for that role. Uh, so I created a role for all my comps apps, so Skype, Slack, uh, it was in there. Uh, same for Dev Tools Entertainment and all I had to do is replace the long list of things that I wanted to install and created a role section here. Uh, and just invoke it, that's it. Uh, the other thing that you need to have in mind is that when you're creating a role, uh, you need to comply with this, with, uh, with this structure. So if you need a file, you put it on the files folder, and, and if you need a, a template, you put it on the template folders, and so on. Okay, so <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to talk about is how to configure, uh, how, how I configure Git. Because every, every, every application requires a different way to configure it. I'm just going to talk about a little bit about how I did it with Git. So for configuring Git, what I needed to do was to install Git. I needed to configure all the global settings, such as well, my name, my email. If I wanted to show colors when I printed, when it printed the output on, on the command line. Uh, and I also wanted to create aliases for my Git commands because they are really, really long. So for example, for a uh, message for a commit, I will, will do git commit dash m message. I just turn that into gcm message because it's easy. So I use a role for that. And so this is a structure that I use. So you have a git folder. And here, what I did was that I created a bash profile, uh, which is a file that ha has, will, will have my main aliases and that would I will be able to use that in the command line. Uh, if it doesn't exist, I, for that I use the file, the file module. So if the, if the file doesn't exist, it creates it. If it exists, it doesn't. Uh, and I use the blocking file module to add the aliases here, which is just a block of text into that file. Again, if that piece of text exists, Ansible is not going to put it, but if it does, it will add it. And other thing that is uh, worth mentioning is that the bash profile file, I was going to create it in my home folder. And the way to know where my home folder was is that I use the lookup function. Uh, and I say, well, it reads the environmental variables. And it, uh, you can use them in your, in, in your script. So that was also really neat. All right, so at this point, I have my computer all set up. Uh, this was really cool. It was really easy. So Ansible, instead of doing always the, like, not, instead of being focused on continuous deployment and continuous integration and all of that, 
I used it just to set up my computer and not even thinking of my development machine, just my computer. Uh, I, all, other things that I with, did with it is that I, for example, if I wanted my screensaver to, to start uh, after two minutes of inactivity, I also automated that. Uh, I also automated my key bindings for my, for my IDE or for my text editor. Uh, and my current approach is that instead of just going and, and installing everything, anything from the console or configuring anything through the, through the app itself, what I do is that I modify my script. Uh, so that way I'm still learning all the, the tips and tricks for Ans from, from Ansible. And it's, like, it's really powerful. I really enjoy it. Uh, and it's easy to pick up. Uh, so the other thing that I... I from this happen is that in te in, I'm now helping the, the person in TechOps in ThoughtWorks to automate some of their uh, some of his tasks. Uh, so he always deals with computers from other employees and does manual things. So what I'm doing at the moment is just automating some things for him. And well, this script uh, it lives in GitHub. So if you if you wanna suggest things, if you wanna use it, if you wanna just comment on it, uh, just you're welcome to it and. I hope you enjoy this talk. That's it. Any questions from anyone? What are the key things that you enjoy about the other applications? It seems easy. So it's YAML. It's just easy to it. It felt easy from to jump from the bash from a bash script to uh, YAML, so I was easy to with the command like I was used to use the command line, so it felt like really natural to just jump from that to to YAML. That was that was the reason for me. About three months, not much. Sorry? Ah, uh, pip. So for pip, I had to use uh, I had to use sudo, which is not really ideal. What I could have done instead is just instead of using pip to install Ansible, what I would have done is in I would have used I would have installed uh, Homebrew in a Bash script and use Homebrew to install Ansible. That would have been way easier. In terms of context, would you figure it in your website Sure. So usually uh, before this, what I would use, what I would do is that I would, uh, for pet projects or anything, I would install anything, any tool that I needed on my computer, and that that pollutes my computer, and sometimes the dependencies crash. So what I'm doing now instead is I'm using Vagrant in combination with Ansible and created little VMs to run my projects in there, which makes leaves my computer alone and I can destroy it and run it whenever I want to without my main computer being polluted by all the, the libraries. Great. Yeah. At some point, I think, well, I can do something for that and having a script that says, do you want to install Spotify? Yes, but it's like, nah, no way. I'm just going to jump into the next thing. But yeah. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. And, and the other thing is that I can't impose my preferences and my key bindings on other people because everyone wants. It's something to work. <laughs> All right. Thank you.